Hillary Clinton is going to elaborate on Russia and also why she thinks she lost to Donald Trump. So let's see if she learned any of the important lessons that she should have learned. Given that then, I wonder if you could address, you've just spoken eloquently about the sexism, mi misogyny, and inequity around the world, but do you believe it exists here still? And do you think... <laughs> do you think... <laughs> were you a victim of misogyny? And why do you think you lost the majority of the white female vote? The security moms, the people who want to be protected from the kinds of challenges you're talking about right, right now. Right, the, well, you know, uh, that... The book's coming out in the fall. Um, but, but we're just to, here just now. to give you just to give you a tiny little preview. Uh, yes, I do think it played a role. I think other things did as well. Every day that goes by, we learn more about uh, some of the uh, unprecedented interference, including from a foreign power. What do you make of, of, of a journalist who, who basically said that, in fact, President Putin hated you so much that it was personal? that he was determined to thwart your ambitions. Do you buy that? Well, he certainly uh, <laughs> interfered in our election, and it was clear he interfered to hurt me and to help my opponent. And if you chart my opponent and his campaign's um, statements, they quite coordinated with the goals that that leader who shall remain nameless uh, had. So yeah, look, I, I think Russia is a great country, and I think the Russian people are extraordinarily talented, and I think they are badly governed, and I think they have been denied their opportunities to really join uh, the modern world in a way that will lift them all up, and I also think that uh, when uh, their president came back after having taken a time out to be prime minister, he uh, rigged the elections for the parliament, and I was your secretary of state, and we do speak out about rigged elections. That kind of goes with the territory, at least it did prior to this <laughs> administration. And so I did say it was an illegitimate election, and it had been rigged. And people, you know, I wasn't telling hundreds of thousands, even millions of Russians something they didn't know. So they go out into the streets in Moscow and St. Petersburg and demonstrate, and Putin blames me, that I'm the one who got all those people in the streets. So it kind of went downhill from there. And, uh, um, do you take any personal responsibility? Oh, of course. I, I take absolute personal responsibility. I was the candidate. I was the person... Uh, who was on the ballot, and uh, I am uh, very aware of, you know, the challenges, the problems, the, um, you know, shortfalls that we had. Again, I will write all this out for you, uh, but I will say this. I've been in a lot of campaigns, and I'm very proud of the campaign we ran, and I'm very proud of the staff and the volunteers and the people who are out there day after day, and... It wasn't a perfect campaign. There is no such thing. Um, but I was on the way to winning until the combination of Jim Comey's letter on October 28th and Russian WikiLeaks raised doubts in the minds of people who were inclined to vote for me but got scared off. And the evidence for that intervening uh, event is, I think, um, compelling, persuasive. Uh, and so we overcame a lot in the campaign. We overcame an enormous uh, uh, barrage of negativity, of false equivalency, and so much else. Um, but as Nate Silver, who I, you know doesn't work for me, he's an independent uh, analyst, but one considered to be uh, very reliable, you know, has concluded you know, if the election had been on October 27th, I'd be your president. And it wasn't. It was on October 28th, and there was just a lot of funny business going on around that. And ask yourself this. Within an hour or two of the Hollywood access tape being made public, the Russian theft of John Podesta's emails hit WikiLeaks. What a coincidence. 
So I mean, you just can't make this stuff up. So did we make mistakes? Of course we did. Did I make mistakes? Oh my gosh, yes, you know, you'll read my confession and my, <laughs> my request for absolution. But the reason why I believe we lost were the intervening events in the last 10 days. There you have it. She hasn't learned much. She does the first part to try to, like, you know, take the critics down a few pegs. Like, do I take responsibility? Of course I take responsibility. Absolutely I take personal responsibility. Now let me go ahead and give you 373 reasons why I don't take personal responsibility and why the blame is on the external factors. The interfering factors. That really was the problem right there. Hillary, the reality is... I mean, let's just keep it super real. You should be able to spot Donald Trump 20 states. And you should be able to win. Like, the guy is a joke. He's a reality star buffoon. He's got a dead meerkat on his head. He's got an orange face. He said, I grab him by the pussy. I don't even wait. He said, we have to take out their families. Talking about the... the family members of ISIS, so not ISIS themselves, civilians in the Middle East. He was bragging, well, we're gonna bring back torture, it's gonna be tremendous, believe me, let me just tell you. He said in one of the debates, uh, we have to keep wages low, we have to keep wages low. But you are so, you so don't give a shit about policy, that you couldn't call him out on any of the policy stuff. And so you lost. He, in, in an insane turn of events, he was able to outpopulist you on economic issues. That's all on you. It's all on you. That's why you lost, because you lost the Rust Belt. You lost the, the uh, former Democratic firewall. So the fact that you didn't fucking campaign in Michigan, yeah, like Donald Trump, it wasn't Trump's fault that you didn't campaign in fucking Michigan, that you ignored the Rust Belt because you thought, ah, I got it locked up. Meanwhile, he's there hammering home a message on trade that he's gonna, not going to outsource the job. He's going to bring the jobs back. He's going to do an infrastructure bill. And you're out there doing PC outrage and identity politics and platitudes and cliches like Stronger together, break down the barriers, America is already great. You ran a horrible campaign. What was that study that came out recently? What was it, like 25% of your ads or thereabouts covered policy? And you're gonna blame anybody else? What a fucking joke this is. Now furthermore, let's bust up all the mythology here. Okay. Uh, J James Comey, oh my god, in the letter. Guys, nobody brings up the fact immediately after that. So they say, oh, we're reopening the investigation into Hillary Clinton. This was, you know, not, uh, the election was soon when they reopened it. Then what happened? He cleared her. He cleared her before the fucking election. Nobody brings that up. Nobody brings that up. Oh yeah, we're reopening the investigation. Anyway, we're clearing her. He cleared her before the fucking election, so you can't say, Oh yeah, blame the, blame the letter. You can't say that, you can't say it, he fucking cleared her. So if anything, that would give her a bump in her direction. So stop making that fucking excuse. Okay, then she goes, look at all the other things she listed. Uh, misogyny, false equivalency, Russian interference, negativity. Who's responsible for trying to get people positive about your campaign? I believe it's you, Hillary! I believe it's you! Uh, and Comey and WikiLeaks. Now, Julian Assange made a great point about this, when he saw this clip from Hillary. Um, those were your words. WikiLeaks released your words. So, the fact that you're blaming any- like, that's you and what you said! So how can it be like, oh, WikiLeaks interference? That's like saying, my own interference in my own election. Because it's your words! People saw what I actually said and did, and they were like, well, you know, we don't like you as much. Well, whose fucking fault is that? And there's a reason that clip was long. Now, why was that clip long? There was a part in there that's directly relevant and shows a, a clear contradiction. So when she's talking about Russia, she says, when I was Secretary of State, I said that uh, Vladimir Putin, in, you know, rigged the election, basically, interfered in the election, and, um, I said that, and there were people protesting in Moscow, and Vladimir Putin blamed me. He blamed me for pointing out the fact that there was a, a rigged election. Now, think about the point she's making there. She's saying, the problem wasn't me that I relayed the information, that I said it, that I leaked the fact that you rigged the election. 
The problem is that you rigged the election. So she's like, how can you blame me? I'm just reporting what is accurate. Hmm, I wonder what other context that argument works in. Fucking WikiLeaks! They're just reporting what's accurate! They're just reporting your emails! You're- you're blaming them for the same reason that Vladimir Putin blamed you! Vladimir Putin said, how dare you bring up the fact that I rigged the election? No, Vlad, the problem was that you fucking rigged the election, not that she brought it up. Hillary, the problem is that you wrote those emails, not that they brought it up. Such a fucking hypocrite. And also, by the way, yes, no, I note the irony of, she's talking about how we used to be against rigged election in America until this president. You're fucking buddy-buddy with Saudi Arabia. Talking about rigged elections. That's an absolute theocratic monarchy. It's a, like a full dictatorship. Talking about we believe in rigged elections. Please. Oh, please, you believe in rigged elections. There, again, some of the things we learned from the leaks, they wanted to rig the election in Palestine. They were mad that they didn't, and Hamas won. Hillary is saying, yeah, we should have we should have done something in there. We should have rigged that election. Talking about, oh, we, we believe in free and fair elections here. And what happened with the DNC? That's what the WikiLeaks emails revealed. Is that you guys tipped the scales against Bernie from day one. So, but you're so shameless. So, so shameless out there like, we're against rigged elections until now, at least with this president. You fucking, you rigged the primary. What are you talking about? So, look, man, that's the problem. She's re Here's why this is important, because people keep bringing it up to us, to the Bernie people, and saying, like, why do you keep discussing this? We're discussing it because it's everything about the future of the party, and therefore the future of the country. If Hillary Clinton successfully convinces you that, oh, it's not my fault that I lost, it's misogyny, it's not that they don't want to vote for uh, any woman, it's that they don't want to vote for you. <laughs> it's you. If it was Elizabeth Warren or Tulsi Gabbard, they would have fucking cakewalked into the White House. And a lot of the people who you think are sexist turned around and voted for Jill Stein. How is that sexist? They just don't like you. It's not that they don't like all women. But if they convince you that, oh, it's misogyny's fault, it's false equivalency, it's Russian interference, it's negativity, it's Comey, it's WikiLeaks, it's Gary Johnson. If they convince you of that, what does that mean? That means don't change anything about the direction of the party. Don't look inward, don't self-evaluate, don't course correct. Everything we believe in terms of policy is totally fine. Blame everything else. So that would mean keep running Democrats who are massively pro-Wall Street. Keep running Democrats who are pro-free trade, a.k.a. outsourcing. Keep running Democrats who are super hawkish. That's what this means. It means keep going in the neoliberal direction. But that's exactly why we're fighting so hard, this battle. Because... If you keep going in the neoliberal direction, the party is utterly obliterated and decimated and destroyed. It's already obliterated and decimated and destroyed. That's why Donald Trump is president, the Republicans hold the House, the Republicans hold the Senate, they hold the majority of state legislatures, they hold the majority of governorships. So that's why you have to, you take, when you say I take full responsibility, you need to follow that up by saying I shouldn't be so pro-Wall Street, I shouldn't be so pro-free trade, I shouldn't be so hawkish. I shouldn't never learn from my mistakes. I shouldn't have said in my speeches, hey, there's bigotry against the rich and aren't the rich so oppressed. I shouldn't have said, hey, I have a public position for ev all the people and a private position for my donors. Shouldn't have said it. You know, you shouldn't have, you and Debbie Wasserman Schultz shouldn't have lectured the media and said, I don't think you're treating us fairly. I think you got to give us better treatment. You shouldn't have tried to hide the debates to snub it against Bernie Sanders. You shouldn't have tried to atheist shame Bernie Sanders. You shouldn't have tried to change the voting times in the districts that were more pro-Bernie. You shouldn't have tried to do all the sleazy things you do. You shouldn't be for all the sleazy policies you are for. That's the problem. You're the problem. It's not progressives. You know, it's not Russian interference. It's not WikiLeaks who just re released your fucking words. Own up to it. But she's never going to own up to it. So that's why we're here to make them own up to it. JusticeDemocrats.com is the movement, guys. It's the Bernie wing taking over the party. Because guess what? We were proven right. You guys said you can't run Bernie. Why? Because he's the weakest candidate against Trump. The exact opposite was true. You rolled the dice and risked the fucking country on a corporate neoliberal sellout. And this is the results. We now have Donald Trump as president. So you turn around and blame us, hilarious. Never seen a clear case of projection. It's on you. Because Bernie was up on Donald Trump 10 points on average. Some polls, he was up 15 percentage points on Donald Trump. He's the most popular politician in the country right now. 61% approval rating. What's Hillary Clinton's? 35. What's Donald Trump's? 35. So don't spare me your garbage. 
If you want to unify, let's unify be behind a progressive platform. No corporate money, no PAC money, s a Medicare for all, increase the minimum wage to make it a living wage, no more nation building, end the drug war, do a new New Deal, climate revolution. That's where you unify. But if you go behind Hillary Clinton, that's not where you're unifying behind. You're unifying behind a cult of personality that sold out to Wall Street and the military-industrial complex long ago.